Hello and welcome. It is the uh, first day of April 2019. My name is Derek and welcome to the Money Charts channel. And I'm going to start doing or continue doing these crypto charts, but this time I'm going to do so in a mid-afternoon time frame, at least whenever I can, which is going to pretty much be every day for the most part. Don't be surprised if days like Christmas Day would not be, but with that, that should be uh, not a surprise. And go over Bitcoin against the U.S. dollar, Litecoin against the U.S. dollar, um, whatever else I'd feel to show. And uh, I'm going to talk about Dash today, and I think DGB as well. We'll get the talk. Request. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do one request per day as long as there is one. So in this video comment, I'm going to pick one. And I'll uh, show quickly one particular coin if one is selected today. A couple of people mentioned Ripple, so that will be today's. And the top loser and the top gainer. When I say top loser, top gainer, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to look on the main sites like uh, Obitrex and uh, uh, Binance, really, and see which the top mover and loser is, with at least about a Bitcoin volume as well. All right, all bets, trades are alike within each's own risk and their own reward. Bitcoin charts continue to uh, trade and congest within this uh, key Fibonacci level. And it's doing so after leaving 18 average of lows at a very nice high price point where it was a level of previous resistance in here. And of course, it's holding on to the most recent gain that it had, which is this one in here. Four hour term time frame. I like how on this period here, how we had that line that dipped below down to this previous area in here and then quickly rebounded back and has been showing a lot of strength amongst this rising 18 highs. And it's been doing that for quite some time. Ever since it came down to this 18 correctionary phase on the eight hour timestamp, March 30th. It has been close to or near that maybe about a dozen or Baker's dozens amount of periods or four hour sessions where it has shown strength amongst the 18 average of highs. First, uh, a congesting above and below. Then after this move, it has found support amongst this low right now and holding and staying above it from the previous period. So things to me looking very progressive. This is that single hour move. So it happened very quickly and it did so at 20 hours yesterday, 15 minute time frame. And this is just common within a lot of these markets that you have before a, bit, a decent move, at least a decent move anyway, that you have an op opposite move in the opposite direction. So this is uh, another one of those examples. So I'm very, I, I like the probability odds that this thing can break above resistance and have a, a good move going forward. The next level of resistance I'll be looking at will be around 5000 or a pierce above $4,481.96. Litecoin against the uh, US dollar, it's just crunching and holding in there with microscopic volatility over the last five days. And even all the volatility since uh, March the 16th has been very microscopic, holding 57, but really not able really definitely not able to break above the 61 and low change area. On its single hour time frame, it's been in this sideways consolidation, entering the lower end of this range, and until it's not in this range, well, then it is. And when it is, it's not going to move much. And breaking either side, I would expect a decent sized move going forward. If Bitcoin happens to have a good gain breaking its 41 change barrier, Moving up to, uh, well, decent levels, you can be rest assured that Litecoin's going to go up as well. And most likely even better than Bitcoin in percentage terms. But would go up, it's almost a guarantee that they would go up together. Let's move on to some coins against a BTC. Starting off within Dash. And we'll start with this hourly chart, which got above this major level of resistance and has uh, well been going. And one of the things I mentioned in here back, at this point in here, when it's two, four, five handle, I, I stated, yeah, this looks like one of those times where you're supposed to go long on strength. And it, it was correct. It has had a beautiful move. But since then, now starting to retrace from this top near the 220, 290 handle down to 268. And how much it's going to correct? Well, it's already been down to this level of support in here. It could most certainly go lower. The 18 average starting to rise within this time frame. But then we look at it on the four hour. And it's just correcting it on this more intermediate term. I mean, I, I hate to say, like, say, short term, intermediate, long term, but 
um, because it's different for each person, but shorter and longer term or longer than such is one way of putting it. I guess for me, intermediate term is the daily chart, long term is weekly and above, and short term is these individual like moves like this. But it's had a good move, and on the more longer term when we look at this, this is a statement that it's trying to break resistance. And how I talk about reversal of trend in four stages, you have a declining for quite some time, moving average, prices staying mostly below the lows, and when not in the average, never was it ever escaping the 18 highs until most recently. So for reversal of trend, one, I want to see the market just not go down, stabilize, go sideways enough for the band to flatten out, which occurred at the end of February. Then for the second stage, after having a successful sideways correction, I want to see this break into a level of resistance, noticeably higher, which is the case in here. Enough of the 18 average will start to rise, which it has been doing. And then I want to see it have a successful correctionary move or come back to the band for stage three and then leave it moving forward for stage four. And as it's leaving it, those are good times for to what I would consider entries to be a buyer because when I mentioned about buying on that one video, it really was more of, an, it wasn't even really an intermediate term, it was more of a short term purchase because I wasn't, although you know what, yeah, it was long, it was intermediate term, it was, a lot of it was based on this chart. And then, of course, I was using the shorter term to determine that it was a good entry point. So, yeah, so short term, it already said it's ready to go, or intermediate term, rather. But long term, it's attempting to do it. And when you have a move like this, if it fails a correctionary move and it starts to go lower on the band, shows weakness, then oftentimes you're looking at a failed breakout higher and a significant lower low to its most previous one as a failed move, if that's the case. But... If you successfully go through the four stages, you have a correctionary phase, either through that for price and or through that of price and or time, come back to this and take it out. Well, the probability odds of significant gains are most certainly high when such an event occurs. Let's move on to a DGB, and we'll go short term to long term amongst such, starting off within the single hour term. Another spot where. I mean, what's the status here? Do you buy here? Question mark? I mean, I, no for me. Especially because if you're looking for setups, uh, why didn't you buy here? And has there been anything to tell you to sell yet? Other than portions here and there? Uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, if you just happen to see, like, oh, does this look like something you could buy and get a quick little gain on? You know what? Sure. Uh, your risk would probably be a stop underneath this low at about 310, 309. That would be about seven, eight points. That's close to 3%, 2.5% maybe. And maybe you want to put a tighter risk, or looser risk rather, more aggressive one, maybe 307 or 10 points or whatever. And then you look for where you have the potential to go. Well, this thing has been going up straight up on the four hour. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten green candles in a row. Although technically this is just odd. This was a close of 306 and a close. I mean, this is a break even one, and as is this. Two break evens, and the rest are up ones. But within such, this period has already had one of those, like, I call cattails. I don't know what it is, but it is as it looks. It's just something like this, like that. And in such, I mean, the moves can go 327, 330, 340. Most certainly could be the case. Now let's bring this on to the intermediate term on the daily chart. And we had our point A low, our point B high, going from under 240 to 400. And has then since retraced at 284, making thus far what is a higher low to this one. And is now on its third up day in a row. Today's move is 3.5, 3.6%, making it up to the 18 average of highs. Holding and staying above 304, 305 will be enough to make this 18 average go flat again. But we're looking for strength, setups above the 18 average for... Any type of uh, strength, any type of uh, signals that you'd be looking for, or for a technical term, uh, resumption of the bull market. But if you, whenever you're in a down move, if you have your correctionary move and you start to see weakness falling below the lows, well, now it's most certainly vulnerable for a lower low. Last was 285, so you'd be talking next maybe around 260, down to the previous low of about 235. And finally, via that of the weekly. 
this is the established resistance come back to the band so now it's had that breather from the four very good weeks up in a row a good down week uh, sideways but a little bit down so far this week it's early but you start to notice that it's this say even this week and the next week that it's breaking out above into the nice area around 330 340 and it's holding and staying well above what would be around probably about 320 then the set of possibilities become pretty big because now what you'd be doing after doing stage three come back to the band is working on stage four the final one which is a b clear break of established resistance which is at least around 420 and at that okay now we're looking for a significant leg higher at least one so I'd be looking for a price objective to at least around 540 537 but when it comes down to the situation in that monthly chart more long term you would be establishing uh, I mean you're not even a downtrend here technically you're in a sideways trend but you'd be looking to resume the move that occurred in April and May and even June of 2017 when it went from 20 Satoshi to over 2,500 because it has held and stayed above all of these levels from 16 and 17 and if you look at this on a proper log scale it would be doing it pretty well actually although you can't see it too well on here given percentile moves and that's another reason I like this coin because of its amazing volatility and how and how I can store it in a Trezor wallet how transaction moves on it or fees rather I should say because it's one of them are very cheap and how fast it is for the blockchain to move it to an exchange or from an exchange or from point A to point B basically is relatively fast so I love this coin for trading and in finale getting out above here I mean it could be fun it could be fun if we can see resumption of trend amongst the monthly term time frame and now let's go on to the request and if you have one send it in a comment in this video if there's at least one then I'm going to be showing one tomorrow afternoon and we'll start off within the single hour on ripple and then we'll move uh, all the way up to probably the monthly on this one because it's got good data but definitely the weekly for sure and amongst such some sideways movement it established some level of support at the 7500 Satoshi level back in well this is back in back in last night it did that or two nights ago rather had a little bit of a pierce here establishing resistance magnificently in this area and having this larger pierce which means if this thing which is showing a nice little bullish setup now is to have a very short term level of resistance and I mean very short term I'd be looking at about 7500 to 76 and then well, actually <laughs> 7585 to 7593 yeah that's how short term this is on the single hour I'm just used to bigger numbers within these charts and when you're looking at a coin which ripple it'll have its moves when it's ready but its volatility is tiny and I didn't talk about doji so I have to talk about that and the reason why I thought that now is because it's the king of one of the coins of having low volatility but when they're ready to go can they ever go four hour term time frame you have a failed breakdown which occurred in here why is it a failed breakdown because it broke down a key level of support and had a good move but it quickly came back to where it came from and then even got above the highs not seen in quite some time on this four hour had its correctionary move on the 18 but at that stage it I'm not gonna say it failed it but it didn't succeed mm -hmm. it at this point and now several periods supporting the 18 lows yeah this is a declining moving average that just means that on a bullish level there hasn't been too many great high prices although this one here is starting to move higher it has done a lot of action at this lower end thus establishing the big support and breaking one band one side or the other is a big indication to where the next move is going to go now on the daily term time frame this has just been doing nothing more than going straight down and I'm sure that these lines here are polo -X affected meaning they're artificial moves only price pays however you you can have whatever opinions you have on the market it doesn't matter market doesn't care about your opinions it doesn't care about what strategy you're using it doesn't care what you do but it's going to pay you and and uh, you're going to have to pay either way the price in which is being paid on the market so if you happen to be getting your ass kicked or you're destroying this game on a positive level the market doesn't care but if you're buying down here that means you can instantly sell 
you're buying down here, you can instantly sell. That's what's fain, fain magnificent about it. And in downtrends, when I talk about my buy low, sell high strategy, it can be very difficult to profit because even though it's a, it's a strategy that's designed to do very well in the long term, which is exactly it, this isn't that long term, you can have periods if it goes down where you lose because where are you selling from this high? Well, I showed you two already if you had your buy orders here. And there you have this high that you could have got up to. But even with low volatility, maybe you didn't. Maybe you were looking to sell at, say, easily could have been me, 98, 9900. And then you missed it. That, that can very easily happen. And then maybe, maybe you sold here, but 8275 up to 8800, that's not even 10% volatility. I don't like playing for 10% moves. And then you have a little one here, but it's been nothing but a decline with high volatility when you're able to sell up sell in here buy back here sell a bit here buy back here that's great okay so buy some here there's going to be a time when this market's going to go up and test these levels they I mean markets go up markets go down and its primary move since the start of 2019 has been down and the weekly chart it's choppy it's choppy while trying to establish a bull run. I only see one here, one thing here, that, two things rather, now that I look about it, yep, two things, which is not too choppy. One is bullish, one is bearish. Choppy is going above and below the 18 average back and forth. However, when it made this high, it came back to a successful correctionary phase. And look at the volatility, 6,700 change down to 2,225 or so. Okay, that's like a 3x move back down. Better than that. Great trading volatility. And then to have this move. So this was the first one. The fact that it was able to make a high and then a higher one. That's what bull markets do. But overall, this is just one big move above the 18. And then in here, this support... In a choppy market, this would go back up like this, but it didn't. So this was the second part. But overall, again, this is your choppy move from here to here. And then you go above it, below it, and it's been above it. And it really isn't much of an above move to begin with here anyway, that if this market goes up, the, the, yeah, the bullish setup is still good, but until I can see something that's a clear up or down trend, it's going to be neutral. And most likely in neutral markets, you're going to get choppiness. And as far as a trading strategy that I talk about, okay, so we've had some good volatility. Sometimes it's worth noting that you're going to have periods where just things don't happen and you just don't get too many trades. One of those times is now. But at the start of uh, December of 2017, that wasn't one of those times. Coming back down here, uh, a little light in here. Definitely not much training going on here. Little bit in here. Not much going on in here. And then right now, not much going on at all. If I scroll back to see where this came from. Okay. It was in a downtrend before. As from this move, it made one, two, matching for a third, and then another lower low. That's not choppy, that's downtrend. And it was at a key point. So I'm definitely going to now take this now to the monthly and just like was the case on DGB the logarithmic scaling which I do have set on here doesn't do well with some of these lower price coins it's not going to do well here either and the long term a little choppy indecision and an upward move and again the upward move bias is only because it had a low of 464 rallied to this point and has been making higher lows ever since. The 18 average is now barely declining. Whenever you have like something like this, a rising and a declining average, that's definitely indecision, waiting for something, spending significant period of time within this moving average. So therefore, since this uh, February 2018 move, a lot of indecision with the traders. A lot of people are 
uh, at break even or a little above or a little bit below. And in, and in mass field, a lot of participants, at least in this market against BTC, are in a break even position. And then when you have a significant move one side or another, that means most people are either going to be in a profitable or a losing position. And if it goes down in here, losing position, some people are like, oh, I got to get out now. And that's oftentimes where markets can go down even further. But we get a good clear signal of its volatility. And it's definitely an optimistic, a decent situation to see this low, have a move of this nature, and just stuff like this. Because when you figure everything that you buy in here, you can buy back from, like, say, this point on. And from this point on, whatever your volatility is. But if you're buying in here, you're probably buying this one. And if you buy here, maybe you sold this order. And if you bought here, maybe you sold this order. And if you bought here, maybe you sold up here. Which meant everything you bought here gives you ammunition and coins to sell up here. Which you'd be buying back maybe everything up here. Well, you sold here back at, say, 49.55 back in... Uh, January of, or December of 2017, you're still waiting to buy that. Because maybe you're looking to buy that at 2500 Maybe you're not even looking to buy it. But the whole point of what I'm saying is when you have volatility of this nature, you can have some significantly nice moves that can occur for your volatility and your bankroll and your uh, portfolio when you're able to take advantage of the volatility in your trades. And there's three more coins left. Next up is Doji. Another one that I want to talk about. And this is its day today. So you have a whole bunch of doing nothing and then doing this. Now, what do I like Doji for? Uh, well, it's history. Its actual message of the market is a pure, pure long-term choppy chart. Uh, it's just fantastic. But when we look at the number game, what's support around? And it's been a little higher lately. 30. What's resistance around? Well, 100. We managed to get up to 170. Hmm, wow, three times, eh? Three times. And I don't say A too much. I know it's a Canadian stereotype, but I don't say it too often. I did there. And I don't say a boot. Unless, hey, can you get a boot for my left foot? Or I want two boots. I mean, you don't, yeah, usually boots are pluralized. But I don't say a boot, I say about. It's more of a French thing. A lot of French Canadians have that type of accent for a boot, I think. I don't hear it too much, but people, Canadians don't say it. That's a false stereotype, at least for the majority it is. Okay, this isn't about stereotypes. This is about Dogecoin. I like this because uh, it's easy to store in a hardware wallet. It's on many different exchanges. It's fast to send. It's uh, cheap to send on the blockchain. And it has moves that go back and forth. It's profitable when you play a choppy chart. What I also like about this is if I need to play, say, coins together, two coins together, on a site like, uh, oh, like Coin Exchange or Cryptopia, it's got a good market there. So if I want to take coins off that, I don't want to pay the Bitcoin fee. I mean, I could literally take the Doge, buy Doji on there, and then maybe even sell it on another exchange. But I, I like DGB and Litecoin better for that, which is. Buying that on one exchange to sell on another to get Bitcoin. And you do that because Bitcoin transfers are 50,000 Satoshi and they're just too expensive. But um, I also don't like, but I think it's a good thing, it's low volatility. But if you're in the, if you're looking for low volatile moves, you don't want as big, big, big of swings. Even though it can go wild at any time as well. And the moves, when they happen, can be phenomenal. It's, it's a good coin that way. And in final summary of Doji, when it got above the 18 here, what did it do? It went up big. And let me, uh, it's been many situations. It did it here. It pulled back. It did it here. It had a good move. It did here, but not by that much. But hey, this more than this one right now. Got above it here. Tried to get above it here. So a lot of times it's tried to get above it. It has failed. But when it succeeds, it can have an amazing move. Like this one. Uh, this one, yeah, I think that was an amazing move. And Well, this one. For a while, every time it got above this 18, it was just phenomenal. But 
We'll see. It's making. It's looking. It's trying to make a statement. It hasn't made that statement yet. It's trying to make a statement that it wants to break out and do stage, uh, or just well, it's not a downtrend, but to try to uh, reestablish the resistance level. But it really has to go higher to really show like 68 or so, and then I'll be like, okay, now the attempt is real. Okay, let's do the top gainer, top loser. I'm going to go through them quickly because they're tw we're 25 minutes in, and I don't even know what these charts are going to look like. Bittrex says Bloom is up 61.8% over the last 24 hours. So that's the top gainer that I see. It's a newer one, but not too, too new. It's some weekly charts, so it's like last uh, summer, spring, it's about 10 months old. So here we have a market that was showing signs beforehand that it probably had a good chance of going higher. That's one of the things I talk about on this channel. The chances of something is higher or lower than normal. So the chances back on February 21st of having a 61% day was bleak. But when you've seen the strength that it was showing beforehand amongst the 18 average, uh, there really is no surprise. There's some tremendous volatility along the way. Also, as far as the biggest loser is concerned, I'm going to search that right now. It's uh, definitely a pullback because I noticed it was that big yesterday. That's Z Classic down 15% right now over the last 24 hours. But what you're going to notice is a lot of these losers are just coins that were previous winners just pulling back. And there we have it. So over the past 24 hours, we can see that was way up here before. We're right now at the 1600 timestamp. So 1600 hours was like back in here. Well, that doesn't look like it's down. But yeah, still nonetheless, this is a coin that had an amazing move on the single hour time frame. Has now stopped its move. Stage one, band flattened out. Stage two, established support, which it did here. On the 12 hour time frame, it came back to the band. And then on the 16 hour time frame, it clearly broke support. Thus, bear market time. And it has been in that ever since. It has only had two legs lower this one in here, and then this one there from the bear market time since the 22 hour period. Coming up to here, which is uh, trying to regain the bull market, revert the trend. I sort of could count that as resistance established, but barely. However, from that point, it's been correcting in the span, and it is kind of doing so weak. So as I see this now, as we head into a new hour, we've had one completed hour here showing a lot of weakness. If I don't see this thing getting up to and staying at 478 handle, I'm going to be very pessimistic on this chart, or optimistic it's going to go lower for another leg move. Maybe only down to previous low. But uh, it doesn't look like it's ready to uh, resume any of its breakout points. Four hour time frame also showing it too as it's correcting within it. And it's it's working on its reversal of trend too. It's band flattening out. Here we have the support established back to the band. Now it's leaving the band, thus attempting the final stage, which and this is the break of support, which we'll see on the daily. Is this something that could easily happen? Well, it's well extended from this, several days higher, going from the 27 handle to 70, which isn't all that fantastic for this coin, but, but it is fantastic. Like I stated with Doji, low volatility, this is extreme volatility. So if that's what you're looking for, then this one might be up your camp. Would I be looking, if I were to get into it, I'd be maybe looking for a buy order here, maybe down towards this level in here. And... On the weekly chart, this is what I mean about this being a nothing move. When stuff like this happens and the pullbacks like this, just major, major volatility. And I'm not, and I wasn't planning on showing another chart, but I haven't seen this code in a, a good day and a half. And if this is low, I might buy it right soon. So I'm just going to take a look at GRS. Yeah, it's got a bit to go. Maybe around 40 or 74. Alrighty, thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye bye.